Hello and welcome to Tushka Training. Uh, we already created a bullet hole tutorial, um, but that, that particular bullet hole didn't look particularly great on rock, concrete, brick. Um, it looked great on metal work, like car bodies and so on, but not on, on other surfaces. So what we're going to do is we're going to create type 2 right now, uh, which we're going to call um, bullet hole concrete for more of your concrete rock type surfaces. And the first one... Um, as you can see from the import composite shot here, I've actually called it Bullet Hole Metal 256 when I saved it into my composite action elements folder. Um, which is a good idea to do for anybody. If you create an element like this, start building up your, your folders of elements. Um, I like to do it procedurally, but you can do it with images as well. That's, that's all good. Um, hopefully at some point we'll get... Um, in this effects browser here, hopefully we'll get some kind of uh, element browser as well, so we can just have all our elements on tap, which would be great. Um, so anyway, first thing we're going to do to create this type 2 is we'll create a new composite shot. Uh, we're going to call this shot bullet hole underscore concrete underscore 256. Now I've got the 256 simply because I'm going to switch this out to custom and change the width and the height to 256. You don't really need a big frame for a bullet hole. Bullet holes tend to be small when the scene anyway. As we'll click OK there, we've got our bullet hole uh, composite shot. First thing we want to do is create a new plane. We're going to call this test underscore background. Um, we create this just so that we can actually see the black bullet hole that we're about to create. Uh, we can delete this background at a later date. Uh, so we'll create another plane, which we'll make black, and we will call bullet hole underscore concrete underscore center. Right now, some people have actually asked, why do I go to the bother of naming these files, although they're already within uh, a composite shot so that when you actually use them on your editor timeline or whatever you'll just see the name of the composite shot well the reason I do that is so that my project media over here is also very well organized um, I will be saving this shot eventually as a composite so I'm not worrying about creating new folders and so on and putting my assets in it because uh, one of the great things with hip film 2 ultimate is when you create when you save a composite shot as a composite and not as a project file, you can um, you can just leave it to HipFilm to actually move all your assets into a nice asset folder. So when you import it, it's all imported within a subfolder, uh, and it's all nice and tidy for you. So we'll move on from here. Uh, next thing we want to do is grab the the ellipse mask tool. We're going to hold the shift key, uh, like I mentioned in a previous tutorial, so that we get a perfect circle. Uh, that size there should do it. We're going to grab the select tool and just center it here somewhere. You don't have to be particularly accurate with this sort of stuff. Um, then we're going to go to the mask properties and just bring the feather up ever so slightly just to give it a nice soft edge. Uh, next thing we're going to do is we're going to create a grade layer uh, which we're going to rename to bullet hole underscore concrete underscore uh, cracks right now even the grade layers don't actually go into your media browser it's still it's still worth uh, naming them consistently so you actually know where you are when you're working on stuff right now we've got our grade layer we want to create our cracks and we're going to go to one of our uh, favorite effects which I think personally is named absolutely ridiculously uh, lightning and electricity I've never used it to make lightning and I've never used it to make electricity but I use it for a hell of a lot of stuff um, for me it should be called tendrils or something um, just because it'd be easier to read <laughs> but anyway uh, first thing we're going to do is going to change this ad to normal so you can actually see it on the white background next thing we want to do is uh, we're just going to bring it into place so we can actually grab the handles. We'll zero this out. Zero this out. Right, now we can actually see the handles so we can actually do something with it. And we can put it into somewhere 
have a useful position. So if we put one there like so, uh, we'll, we'll rename this effect to uh, crack underscore o one. Right now we've got our crack. Uh, next thing we want to do is we'll go to the core. Uh, we're going to make the core black and the glow black too. We're going to pull the radius right down on the glow. As you can see, we're actually using the glow to match the feather of the center. So we get a, a very similar effect. Um, that's actually not too bad. Not too bad at all. And I haven't even touched any of the settings. None of the settings whatsoever. You can obviously mess with your branches and your seed and your trunk and your, and your twitch scale and so on. The one thing you are going to want to do is go to animation and pull that speed right down to zero. Now, all that does is it stops it from actually animating when you hit play. It'll just be a static crack. Uh, so we'll just duplicate this. Duplicate that effect like so, then we'll rename it to crack 2 While this is selected and we've got the select tool up here, we can just grab these points and move them how we need to move them, like so. We'll open up the properties. We'll just hit the seed of one. Um, I've actually done that on crack 1 but it doesn't really matter that much. Um, we'll go to crack 2 uh, just just to be OCD, we'll put them in order, like so. Not that important, but just just so it's uh, all in order in our control panel. Uh, another thing we can do here uh, is we can change the wave scale and so on, uh, the twitch scale. We can mess with anything we want. We can put extra branches in if we wanted to, like so. Okay, next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to duplicate this again. Rename it to crack 03. Open the transform controls up, seed that of two, and then move this down like so. Now remember that I've got the select tool selected here so I can see these points. Uh, there's pretty much our finished bullet hole. Um, doesn't look much, but will be effective if we uh, we're just going to turn the background off. You won't be able to see anything anymore, but we don't want this background to be in our main composite shot that we're going to composite the effects into. Uh, first thing I'm going to do, uh, just to show how useful it is, is I'm actually going to save this as a composite shot in my action elements folder which I'm building up now again these will be posted for everybody eventually I'm going to call this bullet hole underscore metal underscore 256 well I don't want to call it metal really because I've already got a metal one and it's not even the metal one anyway uh, completely losing the plot now so we'll change that to concrete and save that Right now, uh, next thing I'm going to do is just to prove the point is completely discard that project, start a new project, go to import composite shot, bring in the concrete bullet hole, and there it is. Assets all nicely locked into their little folder, uh, and then we can create a new composite shot we'll call shot container. Certainly not with it today by the looks of things. Um, now, if you noticed, the last uh, composite I created was 256, 256. It was not what we want. We want a 1080p, so we're just going to change that to 1080p. It'll automatically change the resolution for us. We'll hit OK. Um, we're going to import an image file. Um, we'll go to the classic we used the other day, which is the horrible picture of the wall. Um, the reason I'm using this shot, funnily enough, um, yeah, and I will show you another shot in a moment. In fact, I'll show you the shot now. Uh, is because of this place. This wall is actually connected to this place here. 
This place is a place up on Dartmoor, because uh, we live in the southwest of England, down in Devon. And this is a place up on Dartmoor. And it's a very, very strange and weird building, just sitting in the middle of the moors. Uh, very, very weird place, as you can see. Very large. And it's actually a shooting range. Um, so the photograph I'm using, uh, oddly enough, and fittingly enough, I suppose, is actually the side of a shooting range. So it's probably seen quite a few bullet holes in its time. Anyway, let's get back to the to the job in hand. We're just going to go to the transform tool quickly and pull the scale down a little bit. Just so we've got it full frame-ish. Now, the next thing we want to do is we want to drag our bullet hole composite shot over. As you can see, 256, 256 is perfect size because it gives you a lot of leeway to actually shrink it down. When I created this earlier, I found that 25% was kind of nice looking. As you can see there, the usual tactics apply. Duplicate, move, duplicate, move, and so on and so forth. And to get your time in, you can just move these ever so slightly. And you'll have your time in there of your bullets. You click on the back frame so you can actually see them being created. There you go. Um, again, you can always duplicate in the Media Explorer here, like so. Uh, and open this one up. And all you have to do then is go to your cracks. Like so. You'll, you'll want to whip your, your test background on like this. And then you can just move your crack, move this crack like so, move the third crack like this. Then if you needed to and you wanted to, you could just go three seed on that and open this one and go seven seed on this. And open this one and go five seed on that just to give you a completely random crack. So now when I go to the shot container, I can actually go to my media, bring in this second one that I've created. I would rename it personally. Uh, there's the perfect example of why you want to turn the test background off. So we go back to the shot container. Now it doesn't have a, a background anymore, but we want to bring the transform down again to 25 percent and now we can move this into position like so and as you can see it's completely different there to the other three you could do that for every individual shot if you wanted to they're not particularly uh gpu intensive the this particular effect so it's not too bad you can change it change it up make a, as many duplicates as you want um and you, there you go um Another thing I wanted to point out, um, I'll just turn the test background on again. Um, the reason I put the cracks on a grade was that I actually wanted to have some control over the opacity of just the cracks compared to the center hole. So I wanted control over both of those. So I'm going to bring the opacity down quite a bit on the original shot, on the original composite. We'll go back to the shot container. And as you can see, if you bring the opacity of the cracks down, they do tend to be more effective than the completely dark ones uh, because the indentation of the crack would not be as heavy as the black. Also, another thing you can do if you wanted to is you can create a new plane layer here. And we'll color it some dark red kind of deal. Uh, we'll call this uh, center, actually, we'll, we'll give it a proper name, bullet hole underscore concrete underscore 
center underscore depth. And we'll bring this down below the cracks and we will copy the mask from the original center straight onto that. So it's actually overlaid directly over the top now, as you can see. Um, you can see the cracks over these, but it's it's not uh, it's not that much of a problem to be honest. Because what we're going to do is we're going to bring this now. Uh, we'll delete this point, and we'll just move this up here, something like this. Open up the mask properties. Uh, we'll maybe feather it a tiny bit more. Bring the expansion down a little bit. Not too much. And bring the opacity down. It's not that important. It's not something that's uh, a particular interest. But it might add that little bit more depth to your shot if you needed it. You can... You can mess around with the shape all day and get it to however you wanted it to be. Um, it may add a little bit of depth to your shot. It may not. It's a very, very subtle effect. Very subtle effect. You can bring the opacity up if you want it to be a little less subtle. Um, but that's the bullet holes for concrete. I hope you enjoyed it, and we'll see you on the next tutorial. Remember to hit subscribe if you want to see more.